This video is for a woman that wants to be a godly, fearing wife. You want to learn how to please your husband and you desire to be a good wife. So if you want to learn how to be a good wife, you are at the right place. I'm a wife. I've been married for 30 and a half years. Over the years, I have learned a lot about being a wife. I teach Christian women how to thrive and to develop good relationships with their husbands through faith-based content. So if you want to learn how to be a good Christian wife, just subscribe to my channel. I am creating a short series, so make sure you stay tuned for the next upload. Number one, develop a kind spirit. A person that's gentle is kind, mild, and also calm. You will be able to control your temper and also not get upset so easily. One of the main benefits that I have experienced from having a gentle and a kind, calm spirit is that people are going to enjoy being around you. Children are going to like being around you because they're going to be able to feel that from you. And I just want to say this, if you don't already have that in you and you are the type of person that you, you get upset very easily, don't be discouraged about it because you can learn. You can also train yourself how to have a gentle, kind spirit. One of the main things that you are going to have to do to develop a gentle spirit is watch your behavior. And one thing that I have learned personally is that you do have control over your behavior. You have control of how you're going to respond to any situation. The reason why I know that you can control your own behavior because think about how the way that you act when you are around your best friend how the way you act when you have company over your house. Hopefully you carry yourself in a welcoming way. The same way you are careful about how the way that you treat other people that you want to impress. You should do the same thing at home with your husband and also with your children. I am sensitive and being that I am sensitive, I try to be sensitive when it comes to other people, whether it's an adult or a child. So I want to be treated in consideration as well. Your conduct is the main thing that changes things. First Peter, the third chapter talks about your beauty should not come from outward adornments such as braided hair, wearing of gold jewelry, and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. One thing I noticed about women, including myself, is that it's very important to us to look good, to have the latest clothes, nice name brand purses and shoes. And all of that is okay. One of the main things that we do need to be concerned about is our heart. Is it clean? Is it manifesting love? Are we being kind to our spouse and our children at home? It's important to make sure that your beautiness comes from the inside and it touches everyone that's around you. Now that's precious. I want to share with you what I read in my Bible concordance. It says, A changed life speaks loudly and clearly, and it is often the most effective way to influence our family members. Peter instructs Christian wives to develop inner beauty rather than being overly concerned about their outward appearance. Their husbands will be won over by their love, kindness, and generosity. This does not mean that Christian women should be invisible or unattractive attractive. We should certainly take care of ourselves physically, however, it is even more important to take care of ourselves spiritually and allow God to transform our hearts. True beauty begins on the inside and it is our inner transformation that will have the greatest influence on others. So your conduct is what changes things. Tip number three, pray. Pray and ask God to renew your mind. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. So that's why it's so important when you pray to ask God to clean your heart. One of the main things you want to remember is about guarding your heart is what you let into your mind. And if it's not positive information, it can damage your heart. I have a question for you. Do you want to be a Titus 2? wife? And if so, what is your main hindrance from becoming one? 
If you want to become a Titus II wife and you need some help, book a consultation with me. I will have my information in my description box below. If you like my message and you just want to support me, support me by subscribing to my YouTube channel and click on the notification bell. Thank you for tuning in and make sure you stay tuned for the next episode about how to be a Titus II wife. Bye.